We've already seen the output of the show processing CPU command, but let's take a closer look at what this is telling us. It's telling us the five second CPU utilization for this router, the one minute average utilization and the five minute average. But something is very different about the five second average. Notice that we've got 11% and then there's a slash and then we've got a 7%. So which is it? Well, here's what the 7% means. The 7% means that of the processor utilization, uh, or it means 7% of the processor utilization was spent on process switching. Process switching is when the router's processor is involved in making a packet forwarding decision. For example, if we turn on debug, every packet that's debugged is going to be process switched, and uh, that's where that 7% might be coming from. And we could, um, we could also see a listing we can also see a listing of many, many processes, and we can do a sort if we want to. Now here we're just kind of looking, uh, looking at these um, screen after screen after screen, but if I want to see which process has, has taken up the lion's share of the CPU utilization over the last minute, for example, I could say sort the output by one minute, and it tells me under the one minute column that the, the process that's taken up the highest CPU utilization on average for one minute is... Uh, Skinny message serve. I have no idea what that is. Uh, Cisco expects us to be uh, to go do research on some of these from time to time, but that's the process that's taking up the most utilization. Now, 0.54 percent isn't giving me too much concern, but if that were a big number, if that were like 15 percent, I probably want to go investigating see exactly what is that process taking up so much. In addition to CPU resources, we also need to keep track of our memory resources. We've got a finite amount of memory, and we can see how much memory we have available with the show memory command. And what we're concerned with primarily, there's a lot of output. You can scroll through page after page of output, but what I'm interested in is at the very top of the output, and it's under the free column. I'm concerned that my free amount of memory for the processor or for the I.O., I'm concerned that it's approaching zero. I don't want that to be getting closer and closer to zero. I want those, uh, want those to be larger numbers. And again, are these numbers good or bad? I don't know. We might want to compare this against our baseline. Now, if these numbers were like 12, if they were really, really low, then yeah, I would, I would be concerned about that. What are some things that might be consuming our memory? Well, for one thing, uh, we might be running full BGP routing tables on our router. That has to consume a lot of memory. Or maybe we're doing a de uh, well, not a debug, but uh, maybe maybe we have a Cisco IOS bug. There are many Cisco IOS known bugs out there that uh, that deal with memory leaks, where we're uh, we're over time leaking memory. A uh, process is is using memory and it's not giving it back when it's done. And talking about uh, troubleshooting. The, uh, the, router, uh, the router hardware, the router interfaces, the CPU, the memory. Another command that can give us just a wealth of information is the show interface command. Here we're taking a look at the show interface command specifically for gigabit zero slash zero. And right off the bat, we see that we're up at layer one. It says we're up here and line protocol is up. That means we're up and happy at layer two. We get to see that we're at the default maximum transmission unit size of 1500 bytes and we're set to full duplex. If, if we're connected to a switch and that switch is set to half duplex, that's an issue. We want to have a, we want the duplexes on each end of a link to match one another. Now, some of the output that we're going to get here is some of the numbers are cumulative. And by that, I mean, uh, if this switch or this router has been on for a month, the, the total number of input or output packets or the, the error count is just going to grow and grow and grow and grow. And if we look and we say, oh, no, we've got errors. Well, those errors might have occurred three weeks ago. It might have nothing to do with what's going on right now. What we can do is do a, we can do a clear counters command to clear out these interface counters so we're starting from zero on those uh, accumulating counters. That way, if we clear everything out to zero and then we still see errors incrementing, then we probably have an issue. Now, some of the output, and they, they've, uh, they've truncated, they've, it says we've omitted part of the output here, but sometimes you'll see like the five-minute average input and output rates. Well, that's not cumulative. That's an average over five minutes, and you can, adjust, you can adjust if you want to what that average is. And talking about troubleshooting down at the hardware layer, an interface, like a, a gigabit interface or a T1 interface, there's an underlying hardware controller. And if we suspect we have some sort of a hardware issue, maybe a cabling issue, 
uh, we can, uh, more than a configuration issue, more than just a duplex mismatch, but something going on with the hardware. We could take a close look at the controllers with the show controllers command. And here we can see the number of, of bad bytes, the number of cor corrupted bytes that we have received. And if that number is, is large, if that number is growing, we might suspect some sort of a physical layer issue. Another command, and I want to show you an alternate command of this, is show platform, and that's going to give us a lot of insight into what's going on, or, or what, what's making up our router, what, uh, what cards, what modules, uh, what's, uh, what's installed in the router, what kind of router are we running, what model of router do we have, what are the serial numbers of the different modules inside of our router. Now, this, uh, this information, show platform, super valuable, but generally, if I'm wanting information like I want to see everything installed in my router and I want to see serial numbers, sometimes for licensing purposes, you'll need to get the serial number of a module inside your router and you put it in the, uh, the licensing website out at, Cisco's, uh, out at Cisco's website. Let me show you an alternate command. Let's, uh, let's go out to a live interface real quick and let me show you a different command. The command I would offer to you is show inventory. Show inventory is going to give you similar information, but it's a lot more concise. It tells you, I'm on a 2811 chassis. We can see the serial number for this chassis. It tells me individual modules installed in this chassis. Here is a VWIC 2, a VoiceWAN interface card, one MFT, one multiflex trunk, T1E1. We can configure it as a T1 port or an E1 port. Uh, and we see it's installed in slot zero, meaning the motherboard is the controller. Sub slot one, uh, meaning that uh, it's the second slot on the back of this router. The numbering starts at zero. And uh, th there's one port. So I would know that the address of this T1 port would be zero slash one slash zero. I can see uh, I can see digital signal processors that are installed on my motherboard. I, I get serial number information. This is really all I need most of the time. Uh, so generally, uh, I will use the, uh, the show inventory command. As opposed to the uh, as opposed to the show platform command, just a just a personal preference.